Guys, this is the company that makes the interlock switch. Before I show you this video, I want to make it clear. Don't do this at home unless you're a licensed electrician. Make sure a licensed electrician installs the interlock switch for you. Okay, That's the only way you're going to be able to be guaranteed that it's working right and functioning right. Hey guys, went on eBay last week and picked myself up a generator interlock switch. Came in today. I'm going to show you how to hook this up to your uh, panel. I have a Cutler Hammer pan panel and um, I picked this up on eBay for about 60 bucks. And it is a um, geninterlock.com switch. It's made in uh, New Jersey and it's coded in most places. I believe it's coded almost everywhere. But I'm going to show you how to install this on your panel. Okay, this is my Cutler Hammer panel. Let me show you what's going on in here. This is my main breaker, and this is the breaker I'm going to be feeding the power back feeding from the generator from. So it's not wired, so there's no wires running to it right now. It's just occupying a space in the in the box. The purpose of an interlock switch is to keep, let's say the power goes out and you back feed the house and you forget to turn the main breaker off, turn it to the off position, you're going to back feed the wires going out into the grid. And what's going to happen is you could kill someone or hurt someone because there's going to be an electrician working on those lines possibly and because you left this on the on position the electricity you're feeding your you're back feeding into your house is going to zap someone a linesman and you're going to hurt someone so you shouldn't be back feeding without an interlock switch because an interlock switch will not allow you to back feed your house and place this on the on position unless the switch is turned off the main brake is turned off so it's code and pretty much every area I know so um, this is what the interlock switch is going to look like it's going to be placed right here pretty much it's going to go here and if you if you let's say it was installed right now as you can see the breaker the 30 amp breaker on the bottom where the generator back feed is you cannot turn it in the on position unless this circuit breaker is flipped to the off position so once you flip this to the off position, you're able to raise this plate, right? And it's going to give you the clearance you need, right, to flick this on the on position. So this isn't wired, so I'm just going to... Once it's flicked on the on position, okay, it's going to prevent you from lowering this plate. It's really hard doing this with one hand, but once I get it all installed, I'll show you. It's hard moving this plate. You can't move this plate down. So it pretty much locks your main circuit breaker on the off position and therefore not allowing you to back feed into the power lines. So let me show you how this works and show you how, uh, how to plug it in. First thing I gotta do is take the uh, panel cover off. I'll do that and then they give me a drill bit on the kit that's sized for these uh, screws and let's get ready. Okay, I got the cover off and I'm looking at the instructions and right here you can see that you have to separate the plate in two. There's a bottom part to that interlock switch and that gets mounted onto the box. And as you can see here, I have the box cover off, and that's the location of my plate. I'm going to mark out where those three holes are and just drill them through. They provide you with a drill bit. Hope it goes smooth. And the holes are pretty tight, so make sure you're precise with drilling those hole bits. If you're not, you're going to have to make the hole bigger, and uh, you're going to run into problems when you go to put the screw through because it's not going to properly line up with the holes up here. So take your time. Make sure the holes are correct, and I'll be back the minute I put the uh, holes in. Okay, there you go. Before I clean it up, I just wanted to show you. I drilled the holes in there. you got to remove all the burrs and make sure that they're uh, it's pretty smooth so the screws go in from behind. I had problems with the drill bit slipping a little bit, but what I was able to do is get a center punch and just, you know, tap a little, a, a little, uh, punch in the middle of it and get and it got everything going so here you go the drill bit was provided by the company so it I believe it's a 3 16 inch drill bit okay this is the back of the cover and pretty much as you can see it lines up pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and insert the screws from the back to the front okay, I screwed it on the back I got the plates on the other side it was a little bit tight so I had to use a screwdriver to get these in but they straightened out pretty well let me turn it over and we'll see what kind of fit I have on the other side 
Okay, so this is what it's going to look like on the panel when it's facing you. And this is where the switch is going to go on. I'm going to screw everything in. These are the, these are the screws i got to put on this. Tighten it up, and the whole thing is going to take less than 10 minutes. took me less than 10 minutes to install. Okay, I put the screws on. I'm just giving it a slight little tightening. And I'm going to go from the back of the panel and tighten it a little bit more. There you have it. An lock switch is ready to go. All I have to do is just put it, put the panel back on and uh, see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, I could shim the holes a little bit in the back and move it over slightly, but this is pretty much how the directions told me that I should put it in. There's the switch fully assembled. There's the interlock, fully, interlock switch fully assembled. I put stickers up that came with the switch that, gave, uh, that gives generator startup procedures and a couple little warning uh, labels that come with the switch but pretty much here it is here is the generator feed as you can see when this main breaker is on the on position the interlock switch won't allow the generator breaker to be switched on so right now I don't have a 30 amp NEMA plug hooked up this is just a like I said a breaker occupying empty space on the on the board on my panel so I'm gonna wire that up next but right now, like I said, I was just going to do a quick video on how to install an interlock switch. Now I'm going to shut the power off. Once I shut the power off, I'm going to switch the breaker to the off position. So that's going to do it. I'm going to show you how the switch goes up. So bear with me. The camera might have to refocus. I have my flashlight with me. Here we go. Let me see if I can do this all one hand. Sorry about this, guys. But this is the best I can do. All right, let me uh, let me shut the power off. I'm gonna lose power to the whole house. Let's say, okay, everything's off. Here's my interlock switch. By turning the main breaker to the off position, it allows this switch to slide and allows me to turn on my input switch from my generator, my feed from my generator. Now, nobody, nobody could actually turn on this switch unless the back feeding to the house is turned off so there you have it it's a great little thing to have on your box um, in case the power goes out you're able to back feed and not use any extension cords in the house and you could feed off the panel of course once you turn this on make sure you don't have heavy amp eating equipment on like central AC if you have the central AC on the 30 amp breaker ain't gonna work you're gonna have to go up an amperage and get a bigger generator.